What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. Today, it's a motherfucking day. Straight here, Northside Big Crib in the game. Northside shit, man. Hey, man, say, man, free Palestine, free Congo, Russia do your thing, and take the stand the fuck up. Hey, man, say, man, each day, you day, be a better version of yourself. Never let somebody bring you down, always fight back. Never let somebody tell you who you are, but also never put yourself in a position you don't belong. Stay humble, gang. Let's get on this revolution, on this movement. Hey, man, we out here. Come to the Black Kid for Israelite. As a real Jew, man, keep on spreading that message around, man. Let people know we already know the truth, man. We ain't going down for this. Y'all can't take everything we got, man. We're going to fight for everything. Everything's ours. It's the time is now. Let's get it. Let's get into this bit. All right. <clears throat> Today, tomorrow freaking day, straight here outside Big Crib. In the game! No star shit. Hey man, say man. Speaker knockers! One of my most favorite um rapper of all times, man. You dig what I'm saying? Um Man. You know, when you young man and you got a dream and you wanna be the best ever to do it. You gotta understand, man. Just as much as you wanna be the best, is as much as somebody wanna take you down and don't want you to su succeed and win. You get what I'm saying? Just because you wanna win, don't mean that everybody else wants you to win. You know what I'm saying? You get you 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 make it to where you trying to get to. Everybody been trying to stop you, but you surprise them all. And you make it to where they don't expect you to ever make it to. Crip, speaking of, he has some lit music, man. Hey, he got albums after albums after albums. Y'all can check him out. This nigga was lit. Before he passed away, man. And he passed away young as hell. So... You know, that's what we like to do, man. We like to look back and see what really happened and sort through the situation, gang. You know, we ain't gonna never get 100% full of what really happened. Cause let's be honest, you know, a lot of shit is done behind scenes. They keep sending secrets, this and that. We just don't fucking know. But we can get the gist of what happened. And so I got these videos, I hope y'all, um, like them, shout out to the people I got the videos from, and let's get into it. Shout out to Dose of Mystery. Speaker knockers, man, one of my favorite artists, man. On his father's birthday. So I said, okay, and then after that, I didn't speak to him anymore, but... He took his dad to dinner and then and his brother to dinner and he dropped them off. And I pay attention to behaviors and so I noticed that something was off and so I called and he wasn't answering the phone and then he kept going to voicemail and, and so when he missed his meeting I knew that something was wrong. So I called the police and they said we had to wait a certain amount of time because um you know, you can't report anything that fast. So I went, I was just thinking the words, like, I'm like, what could happen? Like, did somebody kidnap him or what? Because there was a time. When they did their search, according to reports, they ended up finding him in the garage. Did he get set up? That's what I was hearing. Mm. Late April 2014, a young rapper producer by the name of Derek McAllister, AKA 
speaker knockers, was in conversation with his mother, Misha Wilson. The topic revolved around two things. First, they talked about the different things speaker knockers intended to be doing at that point in time in his life. The Is second thing Ahab was something familiar to the journey of life for a teenager. Love. Speaker yeah. knockers had a girlfriend the at the time, and the situation between them both had friction that led to a fallout. His mother, whom he trusted as someone who could help fix whatever roadblocks he encountered in his life, stepped in and assisted in resolving the issue. Little did she know, that would be the last face-to-face -face interaction she would have with her son. From, uh, he was, he had a girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, before, like right before this happened, before he called me, he always used to say like certain things, and I told him, I said, son, you may have more money than me, you may have more than me, I said, but you don't have the wisdom that I have, you're always going to need your mom, so never forget that, and so he always had this saying, um, mom, fix it. A couple of days later, on March 4th, 2014, things would take an eerie turn for the worst, leading to his untimely passing. What made it even more heartbreaking was that it was his father's birthday, and with speaker knockers, ended up in the situation that claimed his life. His mother would speak to him over the phone earlier in the day. It seemed he trusted her with sharing his plans of the future and goals he wanted to accomplish, because this conversation was about businesses he liked to venture into on his own that wasn't under his parents' name. His mother would advise him on the best routes to get things set up before speaker knockers told her he would speak to her later and he was in preparation to take his brother and his father to dinner for his father's birthday. On his father's birthday and we were talking about some business that he was trying to get on his own instead of um, having it like in his parents' name. So I was talking to him and telling him what he needed to do or whatever. And so he was like, well, I'll talk to you later, mom, because I'm going to take dad and, you know, my brother to dinner because we were separated. So he said he was going to take his father and brother to dinner for his father's birthday. Everything was going as planned. Speaker knockers did, in fact, take out his brother and father to dinner to celebrate his father's birthday. At around 11 p.m. that night, he dropped off his father and told him that he would be back. That, unfortunately, never happened. Mm. With the following day, March 5th, 2014, coming Last around, hours, his father man. awoke with still no return of his son or any contact from him. He would call Speaker Knocker's mother, asking if she heard from him, as he was supposed to return to collect something, but he never did. And then, and brother to dinner, and he dropped them off, and he told his father, I'll be back. And it was, I think it was like 11 something or something. And he never came back. And so he called me, That his, I think his dad called me that morning, and he asked me, did I hear from Derek? So I said, no, he said, because he left something here or something like that, it's so long ago. But he said he left something here, and he said he was coming back, but he never came back. At this point, his mother was already worried because she knew her son. Speaker Knockers was a man of his word, and if he had stated he's coming back, then that's exactly what he would do. Her fears of something being wrong would grow even stronger as the days progressed. No matter how much she dialed his phone, it would continue going to voicemail with no response. Speaker Knockers also had a meeting to attend to that he never showed up to. If there was one thing that Speaker Knockers was very conscious and focused on was his business endeavors. So the fact that he didn't show up to his business meeting was more than enough to raise the antennas of his mother's instincts to the point where she knew her son was in danger. I just was just thinking the worst. Like, I'm like, what could happen? Like, did somebody kidnap him or what? Because there was a time where I came home from selling cake on a Saturday and my window was broken. Somebody in the neighborhood or somewhere took a brick and they broke my window and then they got on Twitter and was bragging about it. At this point, she sprang into action taking her concerns to the police station where she requested he assistance in finding he died. her son That's the sad part. and she knew something wasn't right. However, the 24-hour time frame had not passed where they had no contact with speaker knockers, so the police couldn't yet treat the situation as a case where her son was missing. 
She tried to get some rest and told Speaker Knocker's father that they'll contact the police again if they didn't find him before the 24-hour time frame. That turned out to be an impossible task for his mother to do as her mind and instinct was too strong to ignore and just sleep. Around 3 a.m., she would jump up from her sleep with the intensified feeling that something was not right. It was then that she tried to call the police again, but she was again told that they wouldn't be able to dispatch help until the time frame had elapsed. But as soon as personnel for the department arrives at 8 a.m. in the morning, they would give her a call to provide some assistance. I got up like I I was sleeping and then something just woke me up like about maybe three o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I got up and I sat up in my bed and I said, something is not right. So I called the police again. I said, please, you got to help us. I said, something is not right. And so they said, ma'am, we cannot, you have to wait, we'll at least wait till at least eight o'clock or something like that when, you know, uh, that division gets in and we'll have somebody to call. His mother was adamant something happened to her son. So she took it upon herself I to glad she went to the wee hours of the night. Because sometimes I'm going to take on shit. Where she thought he could be. Or to even check around to see if he may have crashed and unable to get help from where he was. She was doing everything in her power to try and locate her son. Unable to find him, she got back home and went to sleep for a few hours before sunrise. I said I called the police and they said there's nothing they could do right now. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like enough because I know my son and he doesn't miss money and he sure doesn't miss meetings. Like he doesn't give his word and not keep it. And so I'm like, for him not to to miss the meeting and to miss his studio time, that's not him. So I just thought like I went out, was in the middle of the night and I was just driving around and going to different places and ditches and all kind of stuff to see if maybe I could find him or if he was somewhere or maybe he crashed or. I don't know, I didn't, I'm not saying that he used to drink or anything like that, but I just didn't know what, you know, so I just... The morning of March 6th, 2014 came, and in an attempt of desperation, she turned to social media old, for assistance, man. as her son still couldn't be found or contacted. In the post, she made it known that Speaker Knockers was last seen on March 4th, 2014 at 11 p.m., and he was driving in his 2013 Black Camaro. Posting and updating like everyone for helping and finding that. her son, the police finally got into action, got the missing persons report, and went on a search for speaker knockers. At the time, her mind was bombarded with thoughts on what could have happened to her son. One haunting thought was that he was kidnapped because she recalled in the past, in an area they used to live, she arrived home to find her window broken, and the culprit went on to Twitter, being the one who did the deed. I just was just thinking the words like I'm like what could happen like did somebody kidnap him or what because there was a time where I came home from selling cake on a Saturday and my window was broken somebody in the neighborhood or somewhere took a brick and they broke my window and then they got on Twitter and was bragging about it while her mind was exploring the possibilities of what could have happened she continued praying sadly the police would locate her son's deceased body in the garage beside his black Camaro mm-hmm. at a South Carolina home. At a South Carolina home. Reports state that the coroner, Gary Watts, said foul play was not suspected and an autopsy found no signs of trauma. The toxicology report was in the works and would reveal if any substances were what led to the passing of the young rising star. The news quickly spread throughout the media of the young prodigy's passing. Friend and collaborator, Zach Dillon, who directed many of the artist's videos, was among other mourners like Young Dolph, Gucci Mane, and the late Fredo Santana. Speaker Knocker's mother was almost in shock and denial, unable to even believe her son was just gone. His brother, who follows in his music footsteps, Christian McAllister, a.k.a. Lil Knock, was only 16 years old and in high school when he had to face the reality of his bigger brother being gone. I found out my brother passed away when I was mm. 16. I was in high school. With news of the South Carolina rapper Speaker Knocker's passing reverberating through the city, the question began swirling around of how he passed. Speculations began spreading that it was due to an overdose and others stated it was a heart attack. His mother, however, would later deny any of those theories, stating her son didn't pass away because of an overdose nor did he have a heart attack. 
but she chose to not disclose the cause of the passing due to not being ready to open up about losing her son. There have been some sites, however, like popular news outlet, The Sun, which issued contradicting statements, revealing that the toxicology report did allegedly state that speaker knockers overdosed on codeine syrup, which induced a heart attack. Whatever the reason for his passing, one thing is certain, a young, talented, and ambitious, driven artist and producer was lost. From a young kid, even after being separated from his father for 12 years, due to him having to serve time behind bars, Speaker Nagger still persevered and his father stuck by his side, doing everything he could to propel him further, even while behind bars. Speaker Knockers was inspired to pursue a career in the music industry after seeing how Soldier Boy created a lane for himself. His mother would try to tell him to have other plans just in case his plan A didn't work. But Speaker Knockers was confident his music career was going to be successful. And that's exactly what it became before his untimely passing. A plan B and C just in case your A doesn't work out. And he said, Mom, and he chuckled. He said, Mom, I'm not going to need that because my plan A is going to work. You just watch. You did. Like that. And I said, Okay, son. I said, But you know, it's good to have a backup plan. He said, Mom, I'm telling you, I don't need one. He went on to create an extensive catalog of music and made beats for mainstream artists he like so Gucci Mane, Two Chains, and Meek Mill, among others. Speaker Knockers was doing all of this without being signed to a major label. He wanted to have control of his music and build his own empire and not wait for someone to see his work. So he remained independent and launched his own entertainment group named Tail Bands Entertainment. The final music video he I recorded was for the song Erica Kane, which was released after his passing on May 22, 2014. Speaker Knocker's impact on the music mm. industry is remembered to this day influencing some of the industry's biggest artists like a boogie with the hoodie and kodak black who remixed his hit song lonely his legacy will forever live on rest in peace speaker knockers speaker knocker speaker knockers was one of the godfathers of internet rap and helped create the new wave of melodic hip-hop but right as he was about to take his career to the next level, he tragically passed away. And his exact cause of death is still a mystery to the fans. Since then, I his said music has inspired up. an entire generation of artists and created the blueprint for modern rap. Speaker Knockers was born in New York and grew up in the Bronx. He was always into music thanks to his dad, who was also rapping and making beats when he was a kid. But when Speaker Knockers was only five or six years old, his dad caught a case and ended up getting 10 years in prison. Not long after that, his mom moved the family to South Carolina to give him a better place to grow up and avoid ending up in the streets. Speaker Knocker started getting serious about music in high school and taught himself how to make beats. But he wasn't just an artist. He was also studying what music his friends were into and what was buzzing on the internet. Around that time, Soldier Boy had just blown up off his Crank That Dance. And Speaker Knockers took a lot of influence from the style and marketing tactics. So, he wanted to find out how Soldier Boy created his sound and found out he used FL Studio to make beats. So he downloaded a cracked version and started getting to work. At first, he was just messing around and having fun with it. But the more he learned, the more he realized that music was what he wanted to do with his life. He started making beats every day after school and continued working on his production skills. But he also started making his own music too and experimenting with autotune to create a whole new flow. He decided to drop out of high school to focus on music, which his mom didn't like. She even kicked him out of the house for a while and he was forced to make it on his own. But deep down, Speaker Knockers knew he was onto something with the music and had to keep grinding. He tried getting a regular job, but knew working a 9 to 5 wasn't for him. So he put all his energy into making beats so he could find a way to support himself through music. He started dropping 3 to 5 beats per day online and even spent two straight summers sitting inside working on music. He was putting his tracks up on SoundClick, a website where rappers could search and find beats. He just kept grinding until he had hundreds of beats online. And when he made his first sale for $50, he invested it right back into buying better speakers. His dad got out of jail in 2010 and reunited with his sons. He even started helping Speaker Knockers work on his own music and showed him how to mix and master his tracks. With his dad's help, Speaker Knockers released his first mixtape, Flight Delayed, under the name Jamal Jr. He was still building a fan base, so the tape only got a few hundred plays when it first dropped. But even though his own music wasn't getting much traction, his career as a producer was starting to take off. Around that time, he changed his name to Speaker Knockers and created the DJ tag that he later became known for. 
His first big break as a producer came in 2011 when Meek Mill rapped over one of his beats on his song Tony Montana from his Dream Chasers mixtape. That was a huge win because Meek Mill blew up and went mainstream right after that. And suddenly, everyone was looking for a speaker knocker's beat. He went on to produce tracks for 2 Chains, French Montana, Gucci Mane, Young Dolph, and many more. By the time he was 17, he was already selling beats consistently. And according to one source, he made over $40,000 in six months. That was enough to help him get his own place and even buy his dream car, a black Camaro. But even though he was making major moves as a producer, speaker knocker still had dreams of blowing up as a rapper. So, he kept dropping his own music on the side and figured out creative ways to get people to pay attention. He watched Soldier Boy blow up with a viral dance move, so he started sending his music to popular dancers who had a buzz on the internet. Speaker Knocker sent his music to a popular pop dancer from Chicago named Kimo who started making videos dancing to his songs. He also started producing for other local Chicago artists like Boss Baca, which helped him build a large fan base in the city. He started going out to Chicago to perform, where he linked up with another popular Vine star and singer named Tony Romitti. Tony started making vines, dancing, and lip-syncing to his music, which helped him blow up even more. They even collabed on a track called Scared Money and exposed the sound to a whole different audience. Speaker Knockers would capitalize on the buzz by dropping back-to-back mixtapes in 2013, Married to the Money and Finesse Father. He also started Finesse dropping Father videos that were running up crazy numbers. First, he dropped his breakout hit, Rico Story, in September. But a few months later, in December 2013, he dropped a track that would make him a superstar, Lonely. Lonely was a huge hit and helped make Speaker Knockers a household name. He was one of the first artists to mix autotune flows with a production inspired by trap and drill music. With the help of Tony and other creators on Vine like Reggie Cools, Lonely became a viral sound and internet meme, helping it blow up even more. Speaker Knockers knew he was making great music, but he didn't realize he was about to change the sound of rap forever. Even though he was getting millions of views, he still wasn't signed to a major label. Instead, he wanted to stay independent and build his own brand. He set up his own indie label, Taliban's Entertainment, and released all his music independently through the internet. So, Speaker Knockers was well on his way to becoming a triple threat, a superstar rapper, producer, and a record executive. Yeah, he was going he to go in the industry. That he isn't signing anybody but himself, and he doesn't need a big name to get popular. So, he clearly had the vision and wouldn't let anyone stop him from reaching the top. His videos were consistently going viral, and by selling beats, he had a way to make money without signing to a major label. It seemed like Speaker Knockers was in the perfect position to take over the music industry. But at the height of his fame, his life and career were suddenly cut short before he could reach his full potential. Although Speaker Knockers was finally starting to live his dreams, life wasn't always easy. The sudden overnight fame made some family members switch up and start acting different. It made it hard for him to trust people, which only got worse after he found out his girl was cheating on him. According to his yep. friends and family, in the months before his death, Speaker Knocker seemed to be depressed and wasn't acting like himself. He said there were rumors that he started abusing drugs to deal with the stress and becoming famous overnight. He still kept grinding and dropped the track, Erica Kane, in March 2014. It was another instant hit, but fans had no idea it would be the last song he would ever drop while he was alive. A few days after the song came out, rumors had started going around the internet that Speaker Knockers had gone missing and no one knew where he was. Fans knew it was serious after his mom posted about it on social media and confirmed that he'd been missing for days. She wrote on Facebook, It's not like him not to communicate or come home for this long period of time. I pray that my son is okay. The day he went missing, he had dinner with his family for his dad's birthday. He dropped his dad and brother off at home and told him he would be right back because he left something important. But he never came back and no That's one ever insane. heard from him again. The next morning, he had studio time booked and a business meeting lined up and didn't show up for either. So his family knew something wasn't right. No one could get in contact with him, and his family started to get worried. Eventually, they called the cops and went to his home in South Carolina to look for clues. When they knocked on the door, no one answered, so they forced their way in. When they searched the house, they found Speaker Knockers dead in the garage right next to his black Camaro. The news shocked the world because he was only 19 at the time of his death and had his whole life ahead of him. Even though his family confirmed the tragic news, they didn't reveal much information about how he died or what happened leading up to his passing. So, theories began going around the internet to explain what might have happened. Some said it was the result of an overdose due to his addiction to lean. Others say it was a suicide and he died from carbon monoxide poisoning after leaving his car running in the garage. The coroner later confirmed that there were no signs of foul play and his official cause of death was a heart attack. 19-year-olds don't usually die of a heart attack unless they're a drug That makes sense. Lean is known to slow your heart rate, which is where the rumors of an overdose came from. But the coroner also confirmed that he had no drugs in the system at the time of his death. See? And it was the result of natural causes. See? His family has also been very quiet about what really happened to speaker See? doctors. But they've been clear that it was not drug related. The girl set him up! Was a complete cap. 
on the ninth anniversary of his death, his mom, Misha Wilson, aka Mama Knockers, appeared on the Drea O show where she talks about her son's death and legacy in music. She said, Reading some of the things that people say, it's like whatever they put out on the media, in the media, then people believe it. And then when I see some of the things that they say, it's not true at all. Like 95% of the things that they say is not true. My son it wasn't no not drug overdose. Of any type the females that he was talking to set that like nigga that. up, bro. And he did not have a heart attack. Um, but I just, you know, want to clear that up. But that's not what happened to him. But even though it was a tragic situation, there was still a silver lining. Because he stayed independent and never sold his masters, his family gets 100% of the profits from his music catalog. At the time of his passing, he had about 49 tracks available online, and his family continued to drop his unreleased music. They premiered a video for Erica Kane a few months after his death, and his final mixtape, Married to Money 2, came out later the same year. Speaker Knockers was only active in the rap game for a few years, but the music he dropped inspired a whole new wave of artists. His melody-driven rap style wasn't mainstream when he was alive, but since then, Many popular artists have blown up using a similar sound and credit Speaker Knockers as a major inspiration. A few months after his death, Kodak Black released a remix of Lonely called Awful 14. Kodak blew up not long after that, and in the next few years, more and more artists would give Speaker Knockers the flowers he deserved. When A Boogie with the Hoodie first came out, many people compared his sound to Speaker Knockers. He was asked about it in an interview with The Breakfast Club, and A Boogie said he took it as a compliment because he was bumping Speaker Knockers all the time when he first started to rap. It's crazy because when I came out, that's what I was listening to too. So that's why I was saying like. That's what I started cycle. listening to. Speaking of this, speaking of I started yeah, making my YouTube. Even if he was out right now, like, I really started listening to speaking of this. Ah, he'd have been huge. God bless you, dead. It would have been the same thing. You think it's a compliment when people do that? Of course, of course, because the boy real. When he does, I say. I started listening to speaking of this like. So, kind of after he died, because you know, I didn't know that I'm not even know people were saying that, but then after he blew up on a long time, Uzi raps. Um, rest in peace of speaker knockers. Got your bitch all on my arm. Lil Uzi, he just be wildin'. He got like all the options. Yeah. On Naughty Head, Denzel said, Bitches get me sloppy. My pockets on Andy Miller knockers. Bumpin' speaker knockers. Rico story when I see the coppers. In an interview with the fader, Roddy Rich listed speaker knockers as one of his main influences alongside some of the biggest names in hip hop. That lonely that's song, man, is just a up, different type of said, song, nigga. That shit was young, crazy. So I was listening to speaker knockers, Future, Young Thug when he first came out. I listened yeah. to Lil Wayne a lot when I was a kid. Future, Thug, and Wayne, three of the most respected artists in the game. So the fact that Roddy put speaker knockers in that same that's category uh, says content. a lot about his impact on the new generation. Even rappers who you might not expect to be inspired by that wave have given Speaker Knockers his credit. In a recent interview with Billboard, T. Grizzly said that Rico Story was one of the best storytelling rap songs of all time. Man, Rico so Story. Didn't live long enough to uh, watch it all flow, father. Speaker Knockers had a legendary This nigga had some shit. To a whole new sound. This nigga had some shit, nigga. Exact details about his death, but his memory will live on through the music he left behind. All right, shout out to the sacrifice, man. <laughs> Now I got a couple niggas stickers on me But nigga, I don't wanna be your homie I have to make a couple bands by my lonely I have to make a couple bands by my lonely I have to make a couple bands by my lonely Couple bands by my lonely But nigga, I don't wanna be your homie At the door now, when it come up Hey, that nigga go hard. Fuck me on them rocks. That thing don't go rah rah. <laughs> Speaking of girls, we're in the legends, man. Fuck. Oh, yeah, some of these music I might have to um take out because you know they like the copyright and shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga so young, man. Blew up at a young age. It's time to turn up. Turn up. Turn up, turn up. Turn up, Okay, that's how I get the stars for you, young as hell. Trying to get a success. 
Kanye 18, you blow the fuck up? Yeah, I was on Talking, 
And he said, Mom, he asked me a question or whatever. So I said, oh, yes, son. I said, I need you to pay, um, start paying your own cell phone bill because, you know, you start making, like, way more money than me, you know? I said, son, yeah. So I, said, <laughs> I said, son, you need to start paying your phone bill. He said, phone bill? I'm not paying no phone bill. And he just got, like, really out of hand. And he got, like, I still blacked out because I couldn't believe, like, how disrespectful he had gotten. And I just, I don't know what happened, but I, that when he sang in Lonely that he got thrown out, I really did. I threw him out. And if I had a chance today, I wouldn't have changed it. I would have put him out again today because I don't tolerate disrespect. And so from then, you know, he just, like, grew up real fast. And he got his own place and everything like that. So we made amends a couple of months after that. But I had to, I had to. You can't do that. Like, some of the things that he said, it just was, like, off the chain because he started smelling and stuff. Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, how old was he at the time? Like when all of this, like when when he was when he got to get the money, you know, he started spilling himself. And he was like, and he disrespected you. You put about how old was he at the time? He was, I think he was about seventeen, turning. He was about almost eight, eighteen or almost turning eighteen. Yes, ma'am. You know, I mean, I'm bullshit, you know? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Excuse my nigga. I don't know. That's like that's nigga's favorite word. Bro. Hey. All I wanna do is make a come up. Make a couple of bands for them come up. But he got the house and had no option. I was going through it with my daddy. We can F and F and have to play it wrong. We fit head heart. Uh, yeah, pull it up in a hey. Kevin got the tattoo. The cash do. Keep me mad too. Without the money, but I had to. I was hungry. Now I got chicken with the chicken on it. But you think you know?
came out, that's what I was listening to too. So that's why I was saying like it's all a cycle. Right. You listening to speaking August? Yeah, yeah, facts. Even if he was out right now, like it would have been like the same thing. Oh my god. It's 
said he lit like he had a short time, man. That's insane. They kill people, but they don't need to sit behind. So I'll be no notice. No, no, not one person. No one is, is, no apologies, no 
I'm sorry, you know, no condolences or anything like that. They just put stuff on, you know, Twitter maybe, I guess, to show a connection or something. I really don't know, but no one said anything to us, and no one has given us a penny. How does that make you feel? I don't know. I think about it sometimes, but I just stop. It's not like that's how people are. Like, you know, you can tell when people are genuine by their actions, not by what they say. They're keeping me up. He was like, hey, Tony, I'm about to put this new song out. Send it to me. Thank you. I'm not good for you. Help me promote that. Sorry, I'm going to cut you up. I'm going to do a new song. I'm going to do a new song. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm going to do one day doing a documentary, you know, on it. And I'm sure by that time, I guess, you know, they'll be okay with disclosing what it is that really happened with him. Uh, I guess, you know, they'll be okay with disclosing what it is that really happened with him. You did what I'm saying? Like, I feel like when you get into that type of position, man, you never know who's out to get you. You never know who's around you on some genuine positivity shit, man. You did what I'm saying? And it's sad because I was right. Like I said, I, they, they were trying to say that the girl set him up. But then I hear some, see some more comments. They were trying to say that the girl, they was having an argument and they broke up in suicide. I think it's something deeper. You know what I'm saying? But you know, to remember speaking not just for who he was and the lit music he made he made, you know, a lot of people, man, don't even get this chance to even put that music on the line for people to remember them. You get what I'm saying? It's so many people that done passed away. It's so many people that done passed away by weird shit. And we don't know them because their music didn't blow up or they just not known like that. And by the same situation, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, this is for everybody who gonna be put in that position to where they lost their lives, following their dreams and going through what they doing. And we just don't know them because they, they, they didn't blow up after they died or they didn't blow up when they were alive. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it people dropping every day. You get what I'm saying? But this don't take away from the fact of what happened for speaking knockers. Young age, only 19, and he passed away. You know what I'm saying? He had his whole life ahead of him. Like, he started blowing up for me toward like 2016. At two years after his death. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was listening to the music. So it's like, you know, 
we put ourselves in these positions, man, just to succeed, man. And y'all gotta understand, man, after everything that done happened to us as a group of people, it sucks. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we done been put through as a group of people, and we continue to go, go through these traps, and it's good to set us up for failure. You know what I'm saying? For us to survive and make it is insane. People just don't understand how hard it is for a young black Hebrew is like a young black man to make it. You did crip. Because everything is against you. Nothing wants you to win in America. You get what I'm saying? So when you actually make it, it's, it's crazy. And all you want to do is just take it even more. So we just got to understand, man. We got to miss these traps that they try to set up for us, gang. You know what I'm saying? We, You, you know, like I, I seen one comment. You, you know these contracts and shit, man. You never know what's the hidden meaning behind all this shit, man. Which I think I said, I think y'all get the gist of everything if y'all really watch the video. So it's like, man, hey, they live young and die young sometimes, unfortunately. So, you know, we only get what we can get out of and we can listen to that music. Long live PNB Rock, gang. And we out this bitch. Hood, no side, come rip, gang shit. Hey, Dad, you know that when we link up, dog, this shit be legendary. You know this is instrumental, you the engineer on it, so. Pull that everywhere.